This guy right here. This guy is Chris. He works at Audio Control. This is another guy over here. What's your name? Ed. This is Ed. Oh. Come on, get in the frame. We're in Disneyland. Is this too close? No, Mike. you're fine. This is Mike. Mm -hmm. We're at an Audio Control training. What's up, John? How you doing, buddy? We just so, finished Audio Control training. We just training. finished Audio Control training. Chris here works for Audio Control. So if you guys have Audio Control questions, that would be a yes, your second. Good job. Uh, let us know where you're from. Audio control questions would be great. I'm here from. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So how this works is there are going to be questions that pop up here that we can okay. scroll through. And um, so Fernando is hanging out at the store today. I came over here. This is in Tampa. What's up from Washington State? How's it going, buddy? Oh my gosh. Um, Seattle right here. So there you go. Yep. Uh, That's pretty cool. Hey guys, what's going on? Is an audio control a a print song? <laughs> Is audio control a print song? Huh? You're, you're you're the music guru. What's up from New York? How's it going? It's Saturday night. Saturday night. Oh, you said New York. Never mind. I said Saturday night. Come in the frame. Come in the frame. How you doing? Iowa. What's going on? What's up, Fro? You know Jason, right? At uh, Stereo Kings. Oh yeah. What's up, man? There you go, Jason. Chris is in the back. Uh, this is Bill. He works at MAG Sales. He's our audio control, Kenwood, Rockford. Who am I missing? Audio box. Audio. Oh. Um, freezing in Detroit. Brooklyn's in the house. Snowing in Utah. What's up from Atlanta? Uh, love your work. Thank you. How do you bypass a factory JBL system in a Toyota? You'd have to either, you have to pull out the amplifier. Go back to the amplifier. We have a couple videos on how to bypass that. What's up from Canada? Hello from Jamaica. Uh, what The JBL, back to that real quick. Be patient. Um, iDatalink is working on their piece to integrate into it. So you'll be able to add the AR. That's coming out here shortly, right, Bill? Over the next month. There you go. So next month. And I know from talking with PAC, you're probably going to see theirs as well. So if you can be patient and you're going to keep your factory radio, There'll be fixes for that here real soon. Um, you guys are awesome. Hello. Nice, nice seeing you, man. Uh, hello from Trinidad. Hello from Texas. We got some Trinidad. Nice meeting you, man. All right, so let's get some questions here. Uh, cool. Let's just talk about uh, so Yeah, talk about some stuff. As far as what we got going on at Audio Control, first, thanks, you guys. We've actually... Uh, seen this huge growth in the last few years with our products and all the the new uh, stuff that we're coming out with um just in a couple weeks we'll be in vegas and we'll be debuting some of these which is a whole new series of of amplifiers this guy here is a 300 watt mono full range amplifier with low pass filters and what we did was we wanted to make these so they're very very versatile so our dm608s have been so successful you guys know what we these were are, looking right? at this and going what if we made amplifiers if this was din size this could be half din so what we can do is now start taking amplifiers and stacking them so in a very small footprint you could assign and have amplification up to eight channels so you can make this a five channel with dsp you can make it uh uh um two four channels and what happens is the cover plates when you stack another one on top would go up here so now when you put the two amplifiers together you just flip them over and then you would have a small footprint where you can do five channels of amplification three channels two big mono channels and since they're full range they'll be really versatile for um motorcycles that have full range 10 inch speakers in the bag something like that uh, so a really cool product um, that will be versatile and useful for so many different applications. Jason wants to know at 300 watts at what ohm? That would be at two ohm. <laughs> so you're it's looking at you're looking at like 175 <laughs> at uh, at at uh, at eight. What else we got? Uh, I was just gonna thank Dakota Bob checking in from St. Louis. Uh, will the DM608 get updates for mm. per channel equalizations instead of channel pairs? What a great question. You want to answer that one? Uh, the answer is yes. They're actually beta testing the software for that right now. I just got my beta test the other day. So, yes, that is coming here shortly. Now, so, real, real quick before, since he was talking about this, this panel here, 
will go either way. So depending, a lot of the times you guys see this, we have to mount amps like this, we have to mount amps like this, and of course this would be upside down. Now you can actually flip it. And also it will be able to mount on the back. So if you have to hide this somewhere and like mount it backwards or whatever. So that's really cool. So yeah, the plates are reversible, flippable, and they can make for some really cool installation stuff. So let's go back to the split EQ update. Yes, um, we are beta testing it right now. So as soon as we get through beta test, we'll be able to uh, um, get it out for the masses, so to speak, and everybody will be able to have that left to right equalization. This guy James was talking about what we were talking about earlier, and I was like, everyone, why not just put a new radio on instead of a DSP? And he was laughing at me because I had said that before. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, let's see what we got here. 12 days of Christmas going. Okay, thanks. Um, the other thing, you guys, just uh, as a reference, audio control, we do manufacture in the Pacific Northwest. We have two facilities, one in Spokane, one in Seattle area. And because we do, even LC2Is, uh, we do listening tests on them before they ship them out. So we offer the best warranty on the market. Um, if you haven't checked out an LC2I, um, definitely do it. Uh, and uh, we got so much cool stuff going on right now. Yeah, you know, and we always talk about the RTA stuff. And I'm going to throw you on the mm. don't talk about top secret stuff thing. But, you know, you guys have seen the cool little microphone RTA that plugs into the phone that we use the smart app on. They're actually coming out with a much better. You guys see us use the PAA3s and we talk about all that. They're coming out with a really cool tool here sometime next year that's going to plug into the phone as well and allow you to buy a black box that will be your RTA, your oscilloscope, and all this fun stuff that's coming down the pipe. So if you guys saw the Camaro video where we were showing the DM footage up on the screen as far as adjustability, you're gonna be able to so, do this. Yep, I'll, I'll get a real quick close up for you guys. But this is screen and if you look across the top right here, you have five different windows and you'll be able to do with one tool, a little black box that plugs into your PC, voltage meter, RTA, SPL meter, polarity checker, and the final thing. <laughs> Jason, I want one today. An oscilloscope. Now, so you'll be able to do real time voltage, you know, sig like active, plug it into the speaker and see what sound is coming out. Now it's not gonna be cheap, but it is gonna be a lot less, ex for, for what you're getting, it will be like if you had to go buy an oscilloscope, a handheld RTA, a digital multimeter, this will be cool. We're assuming you already have a laptop. That'll be awesome. Yes, it will have an oscope, so that'll be cool. Jason also wants to know marine audio? No. Question mark? Okay. It's not marine uh, rated product. No, no, no when, when or when are we doing marine audio? <laughs> oh. I think he wants some silver amplifiers is what he's getting at. Ooh. We need a conformal circuit boards maybe? Yeah. Um, right now, they apparently have no plans on doing that. I'm just I have, we have about three years worth of product stuff that we're working on right now. So over the next three years, you're going to continue seeing a string of products that we're going to be shipping that are very relevant and important uh, for today's products. So we're looking at more and more preamp solutions and how to tie those in using either a Maestro AR piece or, you know, trying to work more with other manufacturers to help us with preamp so that they can continue getting the best and making good sound great. That's what audio control does. We make good sound great. So uh, looking to do more and more stuff that's gonna be really cool. Paul says hi. Uh, an audio control MVC. Oh yeah, yeah. He just sold his, uh, uh, almost 20 year old. He's getting yep. ready to put his system in. Of course he's gonna be using Epicenter. Awesome. Paul says hi. What's looking, up, Paul? Looking forward to getting a DSP from Audio Control. Yes, of course. Yeah. DM608, DM810. We just had a training today, so there's, you know, 15 guys or so that came in and got hands-on experience, got to use the DSP. Um, one car here actually had one in, and I was able to get in and do a tune for him. Uh, Bill here has m multiple audio control amplifiers. Oh, yeah, he's a morale rep also. And you guys morale. asked about that. He's the morale guy. And it sounds really good. How did you so. forget about morale? Yeah, I listen to them every day. Um, this, where was I going to say? Uh, where did I uh, Fernando's back at the store. Oh, guy, so, do you know the retail on the Mustang iData kit? It is uh, with, I think it's 270 with 
with the uh, with, with the AR. Oh, and since we're talking about iData Link, real quick, of course you guys are familiar with the AR. We've talked about that before. We've used it on the Kenwood Exelon product. That's that cool thing, uh, like the Amp Pro that allows you to integrate into your Sony system, into your Beats by Dre, the Chrysler, the Ford, soon to be Toyota JBL. These guys are going to have their AR product available here shortly. Yep, so... By I'm shortly, gonna... probably means middle of next year. Um, <laughs> Just around the corner. The DM608, the DM810, and the upcoming D61200 are all compatible because they have an option port on them, which will allow us to go in, plug in right here the Maestro AR, and it'll populate the inputs for you. And then you can go into the DSP, assign all your outputs, set up crossovers, do time alignment, all that good stuff, and you will have a fantastic sounding system. Now, another thing that you guys have asked about before was the whole Bluetooth control from your phone thing, and he had a beta test here today, so they were actually going to do two separate devices originally. There was going to be a Bluetooth for audio, and there was going to be a Bluetooth for setup, because once it's set up, you might, necess you might not necessarily need that. They've gone back, and they've said, screw it, we're going to make one device, so... We got to play with the straight up beta Bluetooth interface control for the DM. Uh, so it's gonna do music and it's gonna do all your settings. There's gonna be two apps similar to the Kenwood that you guys have seen us use where you're gonna have the straight up installer view and then you're gonna have the consumer view with like the knob and the preset one through four. And that's, that's coming realistically now <laughs> yeah 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 we've talked about it for long enough so hopefully we can deliver uh, on that i think, I think me and dean are going to later you on the way out here to get that yeah. piece so yeah. <laughs> uh so missing the first part on the amplifiers these are going to be the new audio control uh what they're calling acm acm audio control micro so they're going to make three versions of these amplifier they're all going to be 300 watts a two a four and a one um the one channel is also even though it's a mono it's full range um, and it's two ohm. Yep, two ohm. So it's going to be a full range, 300 by 300 watt, one channel amplifier. You can do all kinds of fun stuff with it because it is full range. So you could power mid range with it. Uh, tons of tweeters if you wanted to go crazy. So that's that's what those are. Those are going to be shipping second quarter. First quarter. First quarter. Yep. Damn. The one one and two channel will be first quarter. The four channel will be slipping into a second quarter. So um, somebody asked, what's the specs on, on the 1200? The, on the 61200. So um, we have two 61200s. There's an LC series. That's shipping. That is shipping and bin shipping, which is unreal. I mean, just such a great quality amplifier. Um, it's the, I think, and many have said, it's one of the best sounding class of D amplifiers that's ever, ever been made. They are all rated at 125 watts RMS at four ohm by six. Bridged outputs are um, 400 watts. This is the LC series. And what makes it really unique is that it has eight speaker level inputs, which allows you to sum directly into the amplifier. It's something that typically the kind of features and functions you can do on this is uh, only available um, in stuff that has a full-fledged DSP. So these are really good uh, awesome amplifiers that have a lot of power output and do a lot of OE integration. They also have the widest voltage range input handling of, of a, any single product on the market. Usually you have to use multiple products to do what this would do. And so it eliminates the need to have multiple RCA runs, multiple interfaces, anything like that. You can come directly into the amplifier and, uh, and, and get everything you need. It also has a high pass filter, a band pass filter, and a low pass filter. So with something like this, you can go through and use it uh, in so many different applications. You can do a, an active um, three-way setup for the front stage. You can do you know, a passive set of components, two tens, two twelves, and get 800 watts for sub. There's just so much stuff that you can do that make them really, really versatile. And uh, because they are all audio control products, there's a five-year warranty on everything. Five years. Real quick question. Yep. What do we know? Rough estimate on price? $249 for this guy retail, and uh, the two-channel and four-channel will be $299 retail. So a really versatile, 
a nice smaller amplifier that are, is going to allow you to do some really cool installation stuff. So already I already have plans for, I want to do an installation where um, I'm doing, you know, some a lot higher uh, um, mid-bass uh, speakers and having one for each side and then using the smaller two channel, not smaller in size, same size, two channel to run the tweets. And that's just going to be a, a, a very cool setup and uh, just yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Uh, real quick on the LC. Think of it uh, on the LC600. Think of it as like a uh, LC8i mm -hmm. built into it with AccuBase. Yes. So all the all the amps have AccuBase with the yes. exception of the little guys. Yep. The little guys are going to have but The so mono does have the mono, AccuBase. That's right. The mono well. will have AccuBase. Yep. So and if you guys don't know what AccuBase is, of course, check out the LC2i video, yeah. and we'll talk more about that. Uh, well, so I've, yes, of course, Five Star will carry those. Yes, thank you, uh, whoever yeah. you are out there at Five Star. Thank you. Nicaragua <laughs> in, in the house says hi. Um, cool. All right. Uh, oh, the other thing, too, on that, because it has those inputs for, it has the eight channels of input, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be able to, to, to mix those together. Sometimes you have a tweeter that's really loud. Um, and you want to turn that down. So there are individual inputs or individual volume controls for the inputs on the amplifier. So you can do volume mixing just like on a LC product, like an LC7i, LC8i. So it's not just plug it in and pray to God that it all works. You can actually uh, do some mixing on the amplifier analog style through the, through the volume. Yeah, there's, there's so many cool features. I mean, you'll never have to worry about, even though it has six... Uh, low-level inputs using an RCA Y connector. You have the oh, yeah. ability to go through and say, hey, I want to make sure I populate all my outputs out of one input, or, I mean, the amount of features and, and functions, you can use the optional ACR plugin as a master volume control. Which is really cool, and believe it or not, when you said that, I was like, because uh, a lot of people um, ask, they'll, they'll see like they, they have like a motorsport, or they have mm -hmm. a classic car, and they just want a volume knob. And you're like, okay, well, I can do an external like pack volume knob, and it's like, all right, well, you got to run your RCA in, you got to do this back and forth silliness, and I honestly, didn't know that the amplifier's volume knob could control the whole amplifier's volume. So there again, you could in channels one, you could run a Bluetooth dongle into it, like you were talking yep, about, yep. for streaming audio, and then run the volume knob up, and you have a nice, well-built audio control volume knob that controls all the channels with yep. no signal loss. Like when you have to do Y jacks and all that, you're cutting that signal in half and then cutting it in half again. So you have to really crank up those gains. You don't have to do that. Yep. So yep. very it, cool. They have, they have three different audio buses in them and they, you can sum them all together. And so you can use that single Bluetooth uh, plug-in piece and just uh, turn on the ACR controller for each one of the outputs. Now, David asked the question that I often ask. Is, uh -huh. there, a, uh, is there a DSP with an epicenter built into it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Uh, we have a, the most loyal epicenter customers out there. So thank you very much, you guys. Um, epicenter is 27 years old this year. Um, we sell tens of thousands of them every year. And... Um, they're fantastic. I mean, for the right application, the right customer, there is no substitute for them. So we 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 have AccuBase that we use in all of our newest product that we're we're shipping as far as DSP and summing devices and stuff like that. Uh, Epicenter will remain as a separate standalone piece um, for the time being. Uh, we away. are looking at maybe a, a plug-in to the amplifier where we, we're gonna be able to get in, plug into it, and uh, and add an epicenter function to it. But right now, it will remain. So separate. don't tease. Uh, so a good amplifier to team up with your uh, epicenter 1200 will be this guy right here, the LC 4800. 150 watts by four? The 4800? Yeah, 4800. That, oh, this, this is 125 watts. Okay, 125 by watts by four. No, a guy has an epicenter 1200, you want to oh. fortunately have to pair up with it. Now keep in mind, you oh. can still use that LC, the 600, or the 61200. Yep. Because you could do tweeter, mid, rear. So it's something to think about. Or you could do like multiple speakers up front. So you can still use a six channel to team up with that. You can go full active on that as well. Because right. it has a bandpass channel 
and the front channels are, have a high enough crossover to tweeter. So you can do tweeter, mid, all right on the amplifier. Yep. You don't have to have anything like that. Yeah, if you have, if you have the Epicenter 1200 amplifier, <laughs> the LC61200 is the exact same size and chassis. So you can put them right next to each other. And like Dean said, go ahead and use that six channels and do an active front stage. So you're getting twice the power to the front speakers uh, so you're feeding power to the tweeter on one and two, the, the mid bass on three and four, and then rear fill five and six. And then you can come out of that amplifier into the epicenter with your RCA. And then you have just a, you, you have a boatload of power is what you have. Yeah. Okay. So, so Jason says, uh, you guys have to have an epicenter adjustment trainer. <laughs> So apparently you need to drive down and see Jason. And, uh, oh man, Jason, uh, help him, help I, him I'm doing all I can. This is uh, in the last five weeks, I was telling somebody earlier where, where, where we've all been and how hard we're working. So we're doing our best to educate all the retailers so that all the retailers can then make sure everybody's up to speed on everything. So um, doing our best, but uh, because we are a US manufacturer, you know, we're not a huge conglomerate. Um, we're, we're really, really busy keeping up with all the demand of all of our products. So, so real, real quick before we end, um, you brought up the point U.S. manufacturer, which is key because you, all the final assembly yep. is done here in the U.S. They do what's called a listening test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, that's important because if you think about it, at the end of the day, someone's ears are on this product before it ships before it out ships. the door. Yep. So, and it was funny because we, we were talking about... Uh, Dude, what isn't made in China? Let's be realistic here. Yeah. But it's final assemble here in the U.S. Um, and a listening test. You know, he was talking about when the when the new amplifier, the new 8.1 or 1.8 came yeah. out. How many did, was the first order? 250. 250 amplifiers. All right. Think about that for a minute. You have bigger companies that are making thousands and thousands of amplifiers. What kind of quality control do you think that comes with? 250 amplifiers. That 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 was it. Someone actually listened to 250 of these amplifiers because that was the whole first order. Yep. Made sure they worked, made sure they did that they were supposed to. That's why you get a five-year warranty. On the LC61200, we have an 11-page document um, for doing the listening test. And it takes um, just as long, 11 to 12 minutes, to go through. Every channel is listened to and every switch is moved um, before it gets packaged up. And they do that and they have to reset all those switches and stuff back to the factory default settings and package it up and ship it. So there you go. Another reason, audio control. All right, guys, that's it. We know this was quick. Thanks so much for tuning in on your wonderful Saturday. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Chris. Sorry you guys missed no Fernando today. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, all you guys. You guys have a happy, safe, exciting weekend. I'm out of here. Bye.